what they've been doing to Sister Justina has been unfair and it is absolute unacceptable cruelty. Justina is a Liberian citizen. Under the law, she should be protected. She was attacked, kidnapped, raped, gang raped, tortured, heavily sedated, and through God's divine intervention, her life was spared by a good Samaritan, one of the people hired to cause her harm. And the people decided that they were not going to allow it except that Sister Justina would be lying in a hospital after being the victim of government orchestrated and conducted attack on her with a clear intent to cause her harm. And then Justina received all this support from the Liberian people all over the world in America, Liberia, raising funds for her. And then people here in America assisting her, working with her family and her friends. And they're trying to get her to come to the United States to receive better medical treatment. Because, of course, the, the healthcare system in the country is hopeless. And Justina is there lying on the bed. The U.S. Embassy granted her a request that she made for emergency interview. They gave her a period of, I think, 72 hours, three days, within which she, she had to go for the interview. Or else that request would be arbitrarily, would be automatically... Uh, expired. When Jacinta makes attempt to go to the embassy yesterday, they stopped her. They deployed police people. They stopped her from going to the U.S. embassy for her inter interview. We talked about it briefly on the show yesterday, but it did not change the government's mind. What kind of wickedness is that? Poor lady lying in a hospital. You refuse for her to go to the American embassy for a visa interview because you would have her silenced. You don't want her to explain what was done to her. You don't want her to come abroad and get a huge platform that she might she, it might be a veil to her. And so you stop her. And so this morning I was on the show. And Justina was supposed to go to the embassy. I called the embassy yesterday. And they said, yeah. If she comes in tomorrow, which is today, October the 3rd, her interview still stands. So we're on this show. Then I get a call. That Justina was about to make her way to the embassy yet again and she was stopped. By police officers. What for? They said because they have to take her to the Liberia National Police Headquarters to question her they have to arrest her a sick woman a victim of government sponsor gang rape and torture and you want to deny her her human rights of accessing medical treatment and you think we'll sit there and allow this we will not allow this we will not allow this and so I just Felt the need to do what we did this morning. It was not planned. It was all spontaneous. It just happened. It just dawned on me that we needed to call the people to come out. And then we sounded a call. Let's go and take delivery of our sister's living body. And take her to the American embassy for her visa interview. I didn't know... Sister Justina, before all of this nightmare that she has found herself in, something she did not provoke. But it does not matter. Her situation 
and the, the kind of the kind of thing she suffer, the horror that she has experienced, is unfair, is unacceptable. Meted against her person by the very government that should be protecting her. Why? Because she is an opposition person. Because she made comments about the president and Koji. She narrated things that were har harrowing and disturbing. Is that why? And so we called the people out. And I never believed it would have turned out the way it did today. I never believed, I never imagined that they would come out the way they did. As we were calling you out, as I sat in my studio here, three, four thousand miles away, across the Atlantic Ocean, I never, never imagined you, you would respond to our call as you did today. Hats off to you. And you came out and the people started coming from all over the place. We started coordinating buses. People started bringing their private vehicles and, and taxi drivers, you know, putting their passengers down, coming with their taxis and, and providing uh, free transportation for people and people cash up in me money here in the States for, to pay for buses and buy water. In no time, we're mobilized. Before you know it, Catholic Hospital was descended upon by peaceful Peaceful, yet uncompromising Liberians demanding justice for Sister Justina Taylor. And they thought we would leave without getting Justina. <laughs> the people said, no, we would not leave unless we have her. And what did it do? They were out there. And we were on the radio coordinating with the people. Coordinating with them. And we told the people, block the road. And within minutes, the main motor road, Tottenham Boulevard, was blocked. Traffic shut down. The whole corridor paralyzed. Civil disobedience. Not violence. And while they were at it, we were cautioning them to be civilly disobedient, but not violent. And they heeded our call as they did during June 7th. And we demanded that we must have Sister Chesina Taylor to go to the American Embassy for her visa. I was back and forth with the Embassy folks, communicating. The Costa Show lasted for six hours today, a total five hours and 39 minutes today. The longest edition of the Costa Show in the history of the Costa Show. Coordinating with the masses of our people. And they were calling into the show as they were trooping to Catholic Hospital. These weary people, they may be weary, their spirits may be broken, they may be hungry or half, uh, 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 on, on half empty stomachs, but they didn't mind. They stopped what they were doing and they trooped there. They didn't know one another. People started mobilizing people within their communities and wherever they were, and they began to move there. And you see what is possible when we hold together. And that is what we did today. We proved to George we had that this country is ours and ours and not theirs. It doesn't belong to George we are. It belongs to us, the people. And they went there and they did not leave. The people, it is the people that did this. Uh, some of you thanking me. What are you thanking me for? I simply called them out. But you think if they didn't care, if they were not patriotic, if, if they were not their sister's keeper, do you think they would have come out? They would not have come out. It is the goodness of their hearts, the patriotism, their weariness. They've reached the point where they can take no more from a rogue regime with a narcissistic, egotistical president whose heart is laced with evil and contempt for the people who made him, who he is. He is a traitor. He's let his people down. And they said, we must teach this man a lesson. And in no time, the police were overwhelmed. The masses gathered. And they agitated. And in the end, we won. 
As I speak to you, if you're not aware, Justina Tiller has been set free. Thanks to you, the people. Justina Tiller is at the headquarters of the United Nations in Liberia, the UN mission in the country. That is where she is. She's a free woman. She is no longer under captivity. The eyes of the nation and the world are directed at her, aimed on her. And George Weah cannot touch her now. Jefferson Koji cannot touch her now. And you did this. You the people. And you should be proud of yourselves. And look at what you've done. You know, a few days ago, I sat on the radio and I poured out my heart to you how weary I, 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 I get at some times when I think about how bad the situation is and what a terrible mistake some of us made and made this man president. And I was saying to you, I was beginning to, I was so searching and reevaluating my position on June 7th. And I even said on, on December 30th, I'm sorry, the upcoming protest. And I said to you that I would go and take it to my Lord in prayer and consult him and perhaps hold a day to fast. For him to guide me and direct me. That I was a little uncertain about whether this is what I wanted to do. And you know, I told you I was going to hold a fast and prayer, right? But today's demonstration by the people. A peaceful conduct of Liberians working together in sin. United by a shared sense of patriotism and humanity. Has given me rejuvenation. Has inspired me. That I can no longer sit on our radio and doubt you. I can no longer sit on our platform and, and, and say things of, uh, that, that, that will make you worry. Things that will make you want to lose hope. You have rejuvenated me. You have given me more courage to continue to fight. And I assure you. Uh, yeah, they have gone and they have obtained uh, an arrest warrant that the day I enter Liberia, they will arrest me. I will come to Liberia when I want to for the protest. Come arrest me. Come arrest me. I will come to Liberia for the protest. I will tell you the date I will arrive. The time I will arrive. And there will be thousands and thousands of my compatriots at the airport. Arrest me and take me away from RIA. But as long as God is my protector, there is nothing you can do to me. As long as we have a purpose that we must serve, there is nothing you can do to me. And so I say to you, you the people, all power is inherent in you. You force the hands of the government to do what it did not want to do. You've compelled the United Nations system, the international community to get involved. Just within a few hours, you change the dynamics. We won this battle. You see what you can do? You see what is possible? Do not doubt yourself. And I want to make this solemn pledge, this promise to you. That no longer will I sit on that platform and say anything that may dampen your spirits. Anything that may drowse and douse your optimism we will continue to give you hope to stand up for yourselves as you did today i am proud of you i am deeply deeply humbled deeply humble i want to say thank you to all of you our mothers our brothers all of you for what you did today you humiliated george we are yet again you humiliated him as you did on June 7th. You humiliated him as you did on July 29th. When you voted for Darius Stallone to be senator. And destroy him by 40,000 votes. A 40,000 vote margin. You humiliated him on Independence Day. When you refused to attend his lavish, extravagant, and insensitive uh, Independence Day celebrations at the stadium. You have humiliated him again today. You've made him do something that he did not want to do. You force his hands. You compel the Liberian National. You overwhelm the police. John F. Kennedy said, If a free society cannot help the many who are poor, 
it can never save the few who are rich. When too many people are suffering, far too many, an unacceptably, unacceptably high number of our people are languaging in abject poverty, living on and dehumanizing conditions. People are looking at their kids at home. They can't send them to school because there's no tuition. Children in their droves, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of kids going to bed on half empty, half empty stomachs or empty stomachs every night. This man is a curse on this nation. And Joshua must be aware that you cannot, you cannot, you cannot intimidate us into submission. You cannot. We will not cut to your pressure because we the people have the real power when we hold together. I want to promise you, I have made mistakes in my life during this advocacy. I have done things, said things that I am not particularly proud of. But I assure you, every day I'm learning from you. Today you taught me a most critical lesson. I'm learning from you. You taught me that as long as we stand and be a voice for you, when we call you, you will answer. And if that is a covenant that we enter today, that covenant is being reaffirmed, renewed. I show you. I recommit myself. I rededicate myself. I reaffirm my will and my belief and my uh, to to your service, the service. For a better Liberia. The Pharaoh you see today, you will see no more. George Weah was raised by these people from the slum community to the pinnacle of power in our country. He has become a massive historic failure. And Weah's end is not far. Believe you me, Weah's downfall would be such. A disaster. We survived the war. 250,000 of our compatriots died. Pregnant women had their stomachs disemboweled, their fetuses removed. We survived the horrors of the war. 250,000 people killed. Do you think we cannot survive this, this episode? Of stealing or wanton looting and 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 and, 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 and destruction of our governance system, abuse of power, and marginalization of those they deem enemies of the state. Do you think we cannot survive that? We will survive that. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. Pretty soon. You know, Dr. King said in his last major speech, I've been to the mountaintop. And he gave that speech a few days before he was assassinated in April 1968. He said, like any man, I would love to live a long life, but longevity is not my concern. He said, for my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord and all flesh are seated together. I may not get there with you, but someday, but you will get there. I will get there with you. We will see this. Liberia will be redeemed. A good, decent leader will come to power. George Weah is a fraud. He's a disgrace. And we will keep exposing him. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Bye-bye.